everyone. Today's video is sponsored by a company I am so excited to introduce to you. When I first read about this company and who they were, I was completely blown away by their ethics, by their work culture. My husband and I were both just so impressed and I want you to check them out as well. It's Savvy Rest, Savvy Rest. And they offer a completely different experience for bedding and mattress shopping. They're driven by their shared values of sustainability and community, and they offer safe, natural, and comfortable products that are certified by independent third parties. So, you know, anybody can say they're certified. It's an easy claim to make, but I truly encourage you to challenge that and do a little investigation on companies that say that. And you can with Savvy Rest. Um, Savvy Rest products are free from harmful chemicals and they are manufactured by a company that cares about you, the community, and our planet. They have organic and natural materials and the quality is just off the charts. Savvy Rest is a small B Corp business and employee owned. They have top certifications for organic products and materials that they use. I loved this Woolsey mattress topper. It is filled with domestically sourced natural wool and the layered wool creates a soft plush feel without sacrificing support. Wool is excellent at keeping you warm in the winter, but cool in the summer. And this topper is soft enough to give you pressure point relief if you sleep on your side, like I do. And it's gentle on the hips and the shoulders. It's super comfortable and so luxurious. The topper is covered in organic cotton sateen. The sheets are GOTS certified and made of organic cotton. The natural cream colors blend beautifully with any decor. And the top sheets and pillowcases are hemmed with a narrow pleat. These lovely sheets get softer with each wash, and both my husband and I are absolutely in love with these sheets and the quality. The blanket, which I use for my daily naps, is soft organic cotton in a neutral cream color and has a beautiful herringbone weave. Click on the link for a 20% off coupon code when you use my promo code uh, found in the description as well as in the pinned comment. I am so proud and honored to now be partnered with Savvy Rest and I hope you will check them out and read about them. I know you will be as impressed as me. Thank you to the folks at Savvy Rest for partnering up with me and supporting my channel and sponsoring this video. I am just so excited to be able to share you with all my viewers. Hello, it's Jeannie. How are you? I hope you're all well. I wanted to make this video. I wanted to make it a week ago, but I couldn't. And I'll tell you why. Let's go back to the beginning. 
um, we got home from a three-week vacation in Europe, Italy, Switzerland, and Germany. And I'm going to give you a, a recap at the end of this video after I'm done with a little blah, blah, blah. And um, anyway, we came home. And the first couple of days, because we were gone three weeks, uh, the jet lag was serious. Even taking an Ambien and going to bed at night on the right schedule, it just, you know, it didn't work. Your own circadian rhythm has to, you know, work its way back to your own time zone. You know, I think about when my husband was flying a lot of international flights on the 787, and he would be gone for three, four, five, six days, Singapore, then home, Munich or Frankfurt, then home, back to somewhere in Asia, and then home, you know, just for a few days in between. And I think he was operating in zombie mode more than he even knew, especially uh, the last few years. Because I think when you're older, it's harder. I just think that. I am still learning the settings on this microphone, so forgive the bumps and sounds um, as I learn. I'll figure it out. I'll get there. Anyway, so the first few days, we were very zombie-like, and I, I couldn't make a video. Oh, I was cross-eyed. So then, I'm starting to think, okay, I'm, I'm getting more sleep. And I'm going to make a video, and I have some deadlines, some sponsor deadlines to do anyway. And th those aren't, uh, you know, something you play around with. I, I honor my sponsors and, you know, want to live up to their expectations of me. So, anyway, just as I'm ready to start making some videos, boom! got hit by a cold, kicked our butts, started with sniffles and sneezing, went into the throat and coughing. You still may hear my husband coughing because he has a loud cough. And um, it was just miserable, exhaustion-like, oh, ton of bricks. But then, you know, you start to get better. The last thing you want to do on a day you feel like crap is get in front of a mirror and put makeup on and, you know, do your hair. I can't do it. And my eye, I mean, I just look horrible. And I feel horrible. And I sound horrible. So I had to give myself a pass. Anyway, as I started coming out of that, I started you know, feeling better. Okay, now I'm going to start my videos. <laughs> well then, because, and I'll show you in some of the photos at the end of this video, I kind of got addicted to the mocha pot in Italy. That's that, you know, Italian coffee maker over the, over the burner. You know, it's for espresso. Okay. Espresso, you drink a little bit. Well, I have a mocha pot somewhere, but I couldn't find it, but I wanted it. So I ordered another one through Amazon. Well, Bialette, the best brand. So it came, but I had ordered a large one, like this big. And I packed my coffee grounds in there, and I put my water in, and got that sucker going, and brewed it. Oh, poured myself a nice big cup of coffee. So <laughs> I drank that coffee. We were sitting outside in our backyard. The weather here in Texas and southern Texas is so beautiful now in the Houston area. Anyway, I'm starting to feel really good. That caffeine is hitting me and I'm, I'm making lists. I'm writing down ideas. I'm just like, 
oh, I'm going to organize that, and I'm going to organize that, and I'm going to redo that, and oh my gosh, isn't this a great idea? And my brain was firing at 100 miles an hour. I was so jacked up on caffeine. Well, I started to get ready. I went into my bathroom, and I'm sitting at my vanity, and all of a sudden, I'm feeling woozy. <laughs> really woozy. And um, then dizzy. And I feel this crash coming on that was unlike anything I, I can imagine. Coming down off that caffeine rush was sickening. I could hardly stand up. It was like this weird hangover. <laughs> because this cup I made was more than this of pure, thick, dark espresso. Intense. Anyway, I crashed so hard, had to go back to bed, half my makeup on, I didn't care. I was sick from the caffeine. And I was sick from the caffeine, I was sick from recovering from the cold, and I was jet-lagged anyway. And on top of that, because we ate our way through Europe, no guilt, we ate pasta and bread and wine and you name it, and, I mean, three times a day. And that's not how we eat here. So I could feel my clothes, my pants getting tight. It's like, oh, genie, <laughs> time, <laughs> time to stop that nonsense. So when we got home, not probably the brightest thing to do, we started our keto diet back to keto, and that works for us with intermittent, intermittent fasting. And we've done this before under the guidance of our doctor, and, you know, she supervised and said, you guys are doing great. Zane's numbers were fantastic. His cholesterol went down. His blood pressure went down. That was the best diet for us ever. And we've tried a lot of diets, you know, uh, counting points and this, that, and the other. This worked for us, and it fit into our lifestyle. So we thought, we'll do this again. And on the plane, I told Zane, enjoy that dessert because when we get home, we're done. I'm going full tilt boogie and no more. And I stuck to that. And that probably wasn't the wisest to do on jet lag. Kind of coming down with something, you know. Uh, we should have just maybe waited a week. Lesson learned. Think about that. Anyway, this is just a ramble video, and um, I want to show you some things that I got in the mail while I was gone, and, I, and I'm and i just so grateful. Sometimes I feel like it's my birthday every day I go to the post office and get this stuff. And I only go to the post office maybe once a week. Um, so I want to show you those th and, and acknowledge those people that send me things. Thank you. Um, cards, letters, little gifts, the buy me a cup of coffees, that's what I use for all my magazine things. My desk is a mess. And so thank you for that. Thank you for that. And thank you for your lovely comments. Those are gifts to me, and I treasure those so much. Anyway, I'll go over some of the highs and lows of our trip. And I don't want to say lows, per se, like something bad happened. Nothing bad happened. We had the best weather ever. So many great things. But three weeks is, you know, a long time to be away from home and with eight people, total of us, eight people. And, you know, navigating a lot of different, you know, a lot of different personalities and... What I have to say about that is if you're ever going to travel in a group 
and I did a video on this before, there is some planning involved. And a lot of that is strategic in that you have to plan for your group who is most similar. If we had somebody who was, say, um, I don't know, say they didn't drink wine, that's fine. Um, well, we did a lot of winery things and wine tasting and wine drinking and, you know, meals revolved around pairings and things like that. Um, you know, that would, it, it wouldn't make it undoable. But the more alike you all are, and I don't mean in every single thing, but just overall personalities, the easier it will be. So that is my first piece of advice on that is choose wisely who you want to be with for three weeks. And then flexibility. You can't have it your way or the highway all the time. You know, it's like you got to be really flowy because someone may want to do something one day and someone another day and you pick or you don't do it or the flexibility has to be super high and we were all super flexible and I think by nature very happy people. We all have varied backgrounds but we've kind of arrived at the same place in life and we're very just happy and celebrating life. So that is huge, huge, important. Okay, I'll get back to my travels and my highs and lows and some of the things that I learned. But let me show you some of the things I got in no particular order. Most recently, and because it's right here, my dear little coyote, Olivia sent me this cute angel for, and, and she's going to be up on a shelf right there looking over me. And then there were three of these soft fleece blankets, and those are for Margot, and she loves these. I put one in her little kennel because she sleeps next to our bed in a kennel at night. She, she loves her kennel, and she was like burrowing in this. And then she even thought of the cats. I have to admit, I didn't know what this thing was. Well, they love it. Sputnik was like all over it right away, like within 10 seconds. So Olivia, thank you. You're always so kind. Uh, dear Kim from Angel on My Shoulder, She's got a new channel, and she's doing very well. Let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. She says, Dear Jeannie, I just wanted to thank you for your kindness, your generosity of spirit, and your inspiration. You really helped encourage me to start my channel, and I can't thank you enough. Love, Kim. Angel on my shoulder, ASMR. And, um... Kim is so sweet. She, you can tell she is just naturally this soft, kind, gentle person, but with a lot of wisdom. So I just, I adore her. Kim, thank you. And she sent me a little bag. I don't know how that will sound. With these pretty crystals. And I don't know the names of them except one. And I'll find out, Kim, what these are. But one is the rose quartz. It's the color of what I'm wearing. And I love rose quartz because it's just such a soft and gentle and loving and tender color. And it's pink, my favorite color. So, and I love the feel of these. And I love the color of this royal purple little sack they came in. So thank you for that. And also were these affirmators. 
30 affirmation cards to help you help yourself without the self-helpness, the self-helpiness. And it's got this... <laughs> This unicorn, a bunny riding a unicorn, sailing over a rainbow. That's so perfect. And so I'm going to do a video on these, Kim. And because I flipped through a few of them, and they're pretty cool. So, inspiration for a video. Thank you for that. I love your channel. I saw you trying to go live the other day and I, I tried to click on and then you were off and then I had to do something else so I missed it but good for you I am going to do a live I don't know when and I don't know if I'll let you know but it'll probably be on a weekend but I'm going to do a live and just see what that is like from Bonnie in Scotland Bonnie Thank you so much for this card. There's a, a dog on this card. And it says, Hi Jeannie, one praise you are well within. Your writing is, is slanted to the left. Are you left-handed, Bonnie? Um, one praise you are well um, within happy. I can't read that word. Pray the loyalty of Greyfriars Bobby. And that's who this dog is. Greyfriars Bobby. Um, be of loving bonding for you and your family throughout your life. Special prayers for your dear um, mother, your dear, your dearest mother. God bless you. And a very here's a very old Irish blessing. And I've heard this one. The, may the wind be always at your back and the risen sun shine forever. I think it's on your face, yeah. Um, and it goes on. You can Google it. It's a longer poem. So anyway, this dog, Bobby, um, Greyfriar Bobby, I guess, was known in the 19th century Edinburgh for spending 14 years guarding the grave of his owner until he died on January 14th, 1872. The story continues to be well known in Scotland through several books and films, and there is a prominent commemorative statue nearby um, and nearby graves that are a tourist attraction. That's the statue. That is... Mm -hmm. oh. So the statue of Bobby sits at the corner of Edinburgh's Candlemaker Row and George the Fourth Bridge. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Um, I feel like such a schmo. I had some other letters and cards, and I don't know where I set them. I need a personal assistant, an organizer, somebody who can come in and just know what to do with all my stuff and make sense of it. I need, I need someone to come in and just organize my life. So, and so this next card is from Gina and her husband, Sam in New Jersey. May the Lord Jesus be present in your new home. I wish you nothing but, but complete and total joy and peace and contentment in your new home. All our love, Sam and Gina. And I have to tell you, she sent me something that has been sitting here on my table for a week. And I told her I wouldn't open it until I did this. So, I know it's going to be loud. Jeannie. 
Gina. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. It's a blanket. Okay, it's a throw. Are you ready for this? <laughs> It's me and Zane. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. So when he walks in down there, he's going to look up here and see that. The other side is, it's upside down, so he won't see it, but he'll see the first side. So that's going to be really awesome. Look at that. Oh my gosh. This blanket, like these lights, it blurs out all my wrinkles and my dark circles. <laughs> that is the coolest. Thank you. Wow. Well, now I can take this back downstairs and uh, put it on our sofa. So, thank you for those things. And again, thank you all for everything that you send my way from your thoughts and comments to cards, letters, you know, and these gifts. You crazy people. It's, it's just, wow. I'm so, I'm so blessed with the nicest. I'm kicking the cord. I hope I'm not making bumping sounds. Anyway, okay. I'm going to finish up this video with some highlights from our trip. And then I'm actually off to make another video that has a deadline to it. And I think you'll like it. Like I said, when you're traveling with other people, whom, oh, who you're traveling with is very important. And we just struck gold. We all did. Um, <clears throat> now, we flew first class on Lufthansa. Now, typically, because we are airline employees, retired, my husband, we still get flight benefits. That's wonderful. However, the thing about flight benefits for anyone in the air, not in the airline industry, yes, you can fly for free anywhere in the world. Couple things. The flight has to be... Um, open. There has to be seats available. That changes. That changes on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, I can fly first class, but it's easy to get bumped when somebody purchases that seat, right? And there are lots of ways to purchase seats nowadays with points and status and all these things that, you know, members, uh, uh, airline members have. So we decided a year ago, we're just going to splurge and buy our tickets on Lufthansa. And um, there are discount programs that we have. It's called an ID90. And we did not use that because you can't get first class, complete first class with, with that on this particular airline and airplane. So it was a 747 on Lufthansa. United doesn't have 747s anymore, and it's my favorite plane. It's the queen of the skies, but it, you know, they had to retire her because she wasn't fuel efficient. Um, and so, anyway, we bought business class tickets, and that, so you've got the first or the global first and then you've got business and then premium economy and coach. So we bought business and got a pretty good deal because we bought them so far in advance. Well, right as my husband was making that purchase, he got a pop-up from Lufthansa and it said, would you like to upgrade for only a thousand dollars each? Now, those tickets normally go for about 15000 each, thirteen to 15000 And he just bought business class tickets. And so he thought, yes. So he clicked yes, and he did it. 
And so for an extra $1,000, we got bumped up. We purchased our, into the, like the global first, the nose cone of the plane, which is, there's only 10 seats in there. And they're like little condos. It's so wonderful and spacious. And the attention you get, you know, one-on-one -on -one attention is just amazing. So that was a wonderful, luxurious plus, okay? And um, we just figured this is a great trip. We're, we're just going to go all out. So I'm glad we did that, and I'm going to show you pictures. Um, we got some cool, you know, the amenity bags that you get uh, that was on the way over because we were heading into Oktoberfest time. Uh, we got, I got a... Uh, a purse, like a, I don't know if it's real leather, but a really cool purse, like a crossbody purse with the Bavarian flag, uh, blue and white colors on the inside. And I'll show you that. And my husband, because he's male, got a big, like a big uh, suede sack with all his things in there. Super cool. On the way back, we were on United and we got, uh, we were in first class as well, but they don't have the global first anymore. It's Polaris, and it's nice, but it's not as spacious. We were a little spoiled, and what was really nice is they had fanny packs on the way back, and I could have used that on on the trip, and, you know, to put around your waist and have your chapstick and some money and your ID and things like that, so, um, but we do have a couple of these fanny packs. My husband didn't use anything. I use the stuff on the flight. He doesn't. So. But all the normal stuff in there. Toothbrush kit, face kit, socks, eye mask, earplugs, a pen. Nothing, um... Nothing to write home about, uh, but, but useful, useful. I can use this um, Therabody. That's those are the products inside. I can use this fanny pack on other occasions, and I will. So um, then, one of the best memories I have from this trip were the laughs. I don't think I've laughed as hard as many belly laughs in such a short time, in three weeks than I have in three years. We had so much fun. The weather was perfect. Everything was just, even things that had hiccups to them, we considered perfect. Look where we are. So that is my best memory, is the laughing, the laughing, the belly laughs. And this one gal, Cammie and, and Maria, it, in fact, they're all just so funny. So anyway, um, and the weather, perfect. Um, some brownie points I give myself and some demerits I give myself. The demerits, I get a C- minus for packing. And you know why? I should know better. I should know better. I pack too much stuff. We had a large suitcase and a medium-sized suitcase. And I stuffed them. One of the reasons being, two reasons why. Number one, I packed early, like a week ahead. And then like a couple days before, I'd kind of forgotten what I packed and kind of doubled up on some things. So, packing a week before without documenting, writing down what you put in the bag, and then not taking it out and assessing, reassessing, big mistake. Big mistake. Huge. Um, so, we had too much stuff from the get-go, which means the minute you start living out of your bag and doing stuff, it's hard to close. You can't find things. It's chaotic. So I was so mad. 
So when we got into Italy, the weather was so warm. So we wore all our warm weather clothes, shorts, t-shirts, um, you know, lighter weight things. Um, and then we were going to go into Switzerland into some cold weather. So we had to pack for everything. And then not knowing what Germany would be like at the tail end, you know, it was kind of a guess. I brought too much stuff. I brought too, I went against all my rules of mixing and matching. Um, yeah. Shame on you, Jeannie. Shame on you. At one point on one of our flights from Pisa, Italy to Frankfurt, the flight was late. And so our connecting flight down to Geneva, Switzerland, we were late for that. No, we weren't late for that. We missed it. So there was no other flight going out. And we are there. And there's no luggage. So we decided to take a train from Frankfurt to Geneva. A couple stops. And um, so we verified with Lufthansa. And they said that our luggage would go out on the next flight that next morning and show up at Geneva Airport. Okay, we got that. I got, I wrote that down. Well, that was not the case. We took the train down, trains, several trains. Didn't have any of our luggage and ended up in Geneva. And the smartest one on that trip was Bobby and Maria because they packed everything in backpacks and carry-on. Yes, it's more of a hassle, but they had all their stuff. So I'm, Maria, I need some face cream. You know, <laughs> bumming off of her down the hall in her room. And then we just thought, oh, we'll pop over to the um, pharmacy and get a couple things. Geneva is one of the most expensive cities in the world. I'd never been there before. So I popped in to get some eyebrow pencil because uh, these suckers are not on naturally. And some deodorant. I thought, okay, eyebrows and I don't stink. Good start to the day. So I go, I take this eyebrow pencil. Did, I can't remember the brand. It wasn't even a good brand. Like it's all waxy and didn't even deliver color. And a deodorant. And you know what that cost? Fifty-two dollars. Fifty-two Swiss francs. And it's almost dollar for dollar. For two things. I was so shocked. I couldn't even say, whoa, 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 stop. I needed the eyebrow pencil and I needed the, de de the deodorant. So I went ahead and, you know, gave him my card. It's like, Fifty-two Swiss francs in Geneva. So we didn't know when we'd be getting our luggage. It did not arrive the next morning. We had to go file a claim. It was lost. Lufthansa said, oh, no, we don't forward it. We pull it. That's not what you told us, Lufthansa. We're not stupid. I wouldn't have written that down if that's what I had heard. Anyway, so we decided we're going to go buy a few things, a couple shirts, a couple pair of pants. Um, we had our jackets. But we needed hats and um, scarves and maybe some gloves because we're going to be going up to Interlaken and the Jungfraujoch, the top of Europe, the you know, Swiss Alps. So we went out and the first beanie I see is like 150 Swiss francs. It's like, no, I will freeze my head off before I spend 150 bucks on a beanie. But, you know, we ended up, let's see, we found a Zara. And I went into Zara and bought a few things, still on the high end, and uh, bought a few things for my husband. Um, anyway, if that's the worst thing that ever happens, so what? You know, we may do. Well, then, we went, we, the whole time we were in Geneva, we never had our luggage. We had a couple things that we had because we bought a lot of leather stuff in uh, Tuscany which is a great place to buy uh, leather in um, Florence. 
we had we bought a case um, a beautiful um, leather case with brass fittings oh, so we had a few things in there luckily and so um, we were there in Geneva for three days three four days and then we got on a train and headed to Interlaken and um, someone did get their luggage Cami and Donnie got their luggage, but we didn't have ours. Anyway, long story short, it finally did show up. And now we have all this extra stuff that we bought, and we're tight as it was. So I said, you know what we're going to do? We're done with the warm weather. Let's pack up one of these suitcases and ship it home. So not only did we pack a suitcase, our medium-sized one, with all the things we knew we were done wearing, we shipped that and a box of stuff home. So, now, if we've been home a week and we still don't have them, but um, they should be here any day. We saw they cleared customs in JFK. And do you know what it cost to ship those two things home from Switzerland at their post office? $120. And I'll tell you something. That was worth it because we didn't have to schlep it around and we did a lot of train riding. So, you know, all your bags and things you have to load and find places for, it's hard. So, losing that stuff um, and, and sending it home was the best decision we made. Smart decision. Smarter would have been don't pack so much. Um, now, when we were in Italy, in the, it, we were in this beautiful villa, oh my goodness, this old world villa, huge villa, and it's the kind of place you afford when you are with four couples, because it was expensive. Um, they had a laundry room, which was nice, but the, um, washing machine was super tiny, like this, you could put in just like a couple things and it took the minimum cycle was three hours and there was one outlet in that laundry room so it would have taken forever so we took turns doing laundry and then you have to unplug it and plug in the dryer and then do the dryer and because you're in an old stone villa there's no venting, so you have to take out that big water tank and go empty that every um, every load. So I'm going to show you something where I give myself some points back, and I take this every time we go to Europe. This. This is the kind of the standard you know, European plug. Not everywhere is exactly like this, but most places. And this has one, two, three, four, five, six outlets. When I pulled this out, the other gals were like, what? Where did you get that? This has, we have had this for years and have, we take this to Europe every time we go. See how long that is? And here's why. Because sometimes in the bathrooms, you get one outlet, one, and it's not in a convenient place for me to blow dry my hair, use my flat iron or my curling iron, and my you know, and my husband's toothbrush and this, that, and the other. So, also, what appliances you saved, my brain? Many years ago, I invested because we go to Europe a lot in a European flat iron. I don't have to worry about converters. A couple. European curling irons. Now, there are two different bottoms with these. This is the big round, and this is, um, Switzerland has more of this half. It's the same prong, but they cut some of that plastic off. So, that's why I have to and a couple of other countries have this narrower. So I just buy the appliances and I can plug them all in. I know this is heavy and kind of bulky and doesn't lend itself to carry-on. 
but I'll tell you, this was awesome to have. Another thing that we have that is really, really smart to have is, so here's the plug, the, you know, standard European plug, and this is for USB, C, and regular US, three US plugs. So I can plug this into the extension thing. I'm sure I'm just frying some of these circuit boards, but no, I haven't blown a place up yet. So this, it's, this is by Unadapt, I think it's called. Or Undapt, Undapt. And this, this is a brilliant, you can plug your phone right into the, you know, USB thing here. And so I gained back 10 points by bringing those. So that made life a little easier. So those are, you know, as far as missing flights and taking trains and planes and automobiles, which we did in one day, you know, it's all part of the adventure. All of the ups and downs, you're on an adventure. And if you aren't flexible, something like that isn't going to be good for you or it's going to teach you some things. It's very humbling. I love people. I love people watching. In Geneva, I saw so many beautifully dressed women. If you live in Geneva, wow, wow. Women walking in full Chanel or Versace or... Holy moly, it was just the most beautifully dressed people that I'd ever seen. And um, just stunning. And I know it's kind of the money capital of the world. Wow, what I would, oh, I'd love to be able to dress up like that every day. So it was just wonderful. The coffee, the food, the music, the people, the energy. Um, our group, you know, just, it, that is, that trip will be a lifelong memory, a lifelong memory. I had two videos kind of pre-recorded that I released. One was the Avon catalog with Apollo's hands, you know, doing his thing. Oh, that was so much fun to record because what you saw was the easy stuff. He was like really getting in and trying to force his way in. Um, so he's such a sweetheart. Uh, and then the other one was opening, um, unboxing two things, and I still have them down here. I actually did a get ready with me before I left, too. It was like three weeks before I left, and I'm going to be releasing that as well. And um, so it's, uh, it's a month old, big deal. A month and a half, two months. So that'll be coming soon as well, as well as some other things that I think you'll be liking. So um, it's good to be back in my studio, my disorganized studio. I wish somebody lived nearby who could just come and spend a day here and make it my magic workplace for me. But I guess that has to be me. <laughs> um, my mom is doing well. So many of you ask about her. She is doing very well. She's very happy. She goes out a lot. Her friends come and pick her up. Our kids come and get the ones that live nearby, come and pick her up and take her out. And so she's doing very well. Uh, so thank you for asking when you ask about her. She's very happy. This is She's more social now than she has been in years. So this is so good for her. And... Um, I think I'm almost over the jet lag. I think I'm almost over the cold. And I've learned not to drink an entire nine-person mocha pot of espresso. My, it, my uh, Romanian friend who lives in Italy, um, Christina from a uh, uh, old school ASMR sounds, I hope you get a kick out of that. You must know. Anyway, so now I'll show you just a few highlights. I've got so many photos, and I know I would probably bore you all to sleep. Hmm, there's a thought. But uh, 
I'll show you some of the highlights and um, explain them a little bit. Here. So we started our trip off from LA. Actually, we flew from Houston to LA. Oh, I have to tell you something, and I'm going to write this down to mention. And we went with a couple friends of ours from LA the next morning to Frankfurt and then Frankfurt to Tuscany, um, Florence. <clears throat> and this was our first class uh, little area and it was wonderful. And my husband sat behind me and here, look at, here's that purse. Isn't that so cute? The first class amenity purse. Look at all the room. And another thing that's cool on this flight is you get pajamas, slippers and pajamas, and a beautiful duvet that goes on top of your bed, and then a nice, uh, or, yeah, like mattress topper, and then a duvet over you. It's so nice. And here I am just enjoying this. Lots of great food, great service, and here I am hunkering down after my meal. I did some reading and I've got my Manta mask on because I just don't want any light getting into my eyes. And then I put my Bose over the ear uh, headphones on and go to sleep. And then, so here we are already in uh, Florence and the weather was just beautiful. We went out to dinner and met up with some other friends there. Um, this restaurant was just absolutely wonderful. They've got these great big, uh, look at those vegetables. Oh, so delicious. And pasta. Oh, the pasta. But they have great big uh, joints of ham, prosciutto, hanging up there on the ceiling. Kind of cool. So we walked around. We walked up and down the Arno. Was, look at that weather. It was just stunning. Just a stunning, stunning day. And not too badly crowded. The architecture was just amazing. And then, of course, starting to get our fixes of good coffee and great amazing desserts and food snacks and just oh gosh uh, some gelato I mean how can you be in Italy on a warm day and not have gelato and here's a few of us just out for happy hour more of us uh, Bobby and Maria, they were the smart ones who did everything carry on until going home. And then she actually bought a bag, um, just a little carry on size bag, suitcase, and lightened up her load. Smart. And then, now, this is the dinner I want to tell you about that was kind of weird. Um, there were some people, so on the front right, that's Cami there in the black. There was a table behind her, and this is, I don't know, maybe I'm imagining things, but there was a girl and a guy. Now, the guy had his back to me, and the girl could see me. Long, blondish hair, and she kept staring at me. And then she'd look at her phone, and then she'd look back up at me. And then she'd say something to her partner, her boyfriend, or the guy. And then she'd look at me. And then I saw her take a picture of me. She went, I could, I could tell, because <laughs> I do that. And I thought, does she recognize me? Is, is it somebody? So I don't know. I was, it was a little uncomfortable because it's like, okay, are you going to say something? Or I'd look at her and smile. Like, I see you looking at me. Hello? What? And uh, nothing. You know, she didn't. She would just kind of look down. 
But then I'd see her looking at me again. So, I know it's a one in a, mil one in a million shot, but that was you. <laughs> Raise your hand. But it was, it was, I, I would rather if somebody recognized me, and it's happened a couple times, to say, are you Jeannie B? You know, ASMR? Wow. I've seen you on YouTube. Come on up. It's okay. But I don't know why else. I'm like, did I have spinach? You know, my, you know what's going on? <laughs> anyway, so that was that. And then we went and had port on top of the hotel roof, the patio up. Oh, and look at this view, drinking port to this view. And then when we got to our uh, villa in Lucca, this is where we sat every evening having a glass of wine and some snacks. And uh, yeah, this and the pool, we went swimming. It was just, just wonderful. Would read out there every afternoon ate well, ate so well, whoops, and um, we got, we would get really silly. So I'm here with all my friends in, where are we? Luca! Luca. I am Gina Lola Brigida. <laughs> Who are you? Giovanni Blanco. Giovanni Blanco. Lorenzo Di Cancassini. My name is Giuseppe. No, you Giuseppe. I forget. <laughs> I'm like, well, Lorenzo, I am hey, the, you I, don't I, like no, me. I am the godfather. <laughs> I'm Maria Antonia. Antonia. Antoinette. Okay. Nicola Pindola. <laughs> same, same name. Cheers. <laughs> Buenasera. Mi amo Tanzoni Oliva. Mm. Ciao. <laughs> Mi chiamo Isabella Fettuccini. Well, I want to just eat her up. She is so beautiful. Bellissimo. Bellissimo. How about good chicken? They had, because it was a big property, they had a um, lot of lawn and they had this robotic lawnmower that was going all the time. Whoops. I put my plastic glass of wine on top of it. We called him Momo. <laughs> His name was Momo. And Momo was always out and about. Um, one of our highlights was we had a chef come and cook dinner for us. And she was amazing. Um, carpaccio of zucchini. Carpaccio are zucchini cut in very tiny thin slices with uh, some parmesan cheese on top, some basil, and uh, cook it with only lemon juice. Oh, the second one is bruschetta. Bruschetta is the most famous crostino Luca. Uh, crostino is everything is toasted bread with something on top. And in this case, uh, you have some uh, garlic, use a like rubber, and uh, fresh tomato and fresh basil. And the third is a zucchino flour filled with uh, ricotta cheese, mint, uh, and pecorino cheese, and fry it wow. in breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pollo al limone is a chicken with lemon, cooked with aromatic herbs, sage, and uh, rosemary. And uh, then uh, we add some lemon, some garlic, some Toscan olives, and um, nothing more. Oh. Wow! <laughs> yeah, Wonderful. And the side dish is a peperonata, cooked peppers in tomato sauce. Oh, okay. oh my goodness, she made um, stuffed squash blossoms and ravioli, everything homemade, handmade. Uh, we had some marinated chicken and a lemon herb sauce and panna cotta for dessert and oh, many more things. It, and then wines to go along. Was just fabulous. And then we'd go to a winery, do some wine tasting, and I met the winemaker and the owner of this place. And uh, that was wonderful comparing, you know, tell me about your acids and your process and your fermentation things. And so we geeked out a little bit together. And look at this day. 
Look at this day, how beautiful. Just. And then going back and having our dinner. And look at that. This is the kind of sunset we saw every night. And this is on the train to Cinque Terre. We went to the Cinque Terre for a day. And it was a little overcast, a little cloudy. And you can tell the tourists were leaving, which is always a nice time to be somewhere. And I had a that uh, Aperol spritz. Mm -mm -mm. And <laughs> glamming it up with Cammy and she is, she and I laughed so much, I, I can't even tell you, it's just, she's beautiful, tall, gorgeous, beautiful model, and here I am, the short, curvy thing, but you know, we had so much fun, and her husband and Zane, Donnie and Zane, and this is in um, Volterra, oh, what a beautiful city. This was, it's a walled city, and just, this is a courtyard, and I was just walking around imagining what this was like hundreds of years ago. So, oh, oh excuse me, lady. Oh, who are you? Oh. I'm Jeannie B. Jeannie B and Cammie D. I'm <laughs> And then out to lunch there in Volterra. And then back to our villa, sitting around and just enjoying a fire. We had a wonderful fire pit and sat and just enjoyed ourselves and talking. Just camaraderie on a scale that is off the charts. We had one day of rain in Lucca. We had just gone into the town center, which is the walled city, and um, it got a downpour, but then it was over and got a beautiful sunset that night and it was just amazing. Then we went our last night there, we went out to this fantastic place for dinner and I didn't take any pictures <laughs> of the food, but that's us. Now, this was, I think, around six, everywhere in Italy, and it seemed like Switzerland, too. They fill up by 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10. These restaurants get packed. I mean, every table is full at 10, 10.30 at night, and people are starting to eat. It's like, whoa. Normally at home, we are done eating by 5.30 <laughs> because I don't like going to bed with a full stomach. So anyway, then we <laughs> crammed up everything into our two cars. We had two cars that we had rented, which was smart, and um, went to the airport and took a flight, missed a flight, that whole thing, and got to... Geneva. Okay. I'm lost in the world. <laughs> Where in the world is Jeannie B? We are in Geneva. Hi, Cammie. Hi, Donnie. Hi, honey. And then look at that beautiful mountain. Look at that. Look at the weather. Wow. That's okay. You know, we didn't have everything, but that's fine. We made do. And then the next day we went up to the Jungfrau Joch, which is Jungfrau means German. Uh, it means a virgin in German. And then the Joch, um, like a yoke, connecting the two mountains. And we took a train, a tram, a, a, a cable, you know, suspended cable thing and a cog car up to the top of that mountain. We were at 11,400 feet, give or take. And look at this day. Look at how beautiful this was. Just amazing. 
and they have stops along the way where you can get out and walk around and explore. And then when you're up there, you can go, there's this ice cave. It's a, an ice cave and the floor is ice. So you've got to be careful that you don't slip. And uh, as you can see, it's very easy to do. One of our friends did, Maria fell and landed on her hip and um, she's okay, but whew. so there we are, the, supposedly the top of Europe. I think it's number two, I could be wrong, but I think it's number two. And uh, it was chilly, it was chilly, but beautiful. And then we had lunch, a window view of everything, the Alps, the Swiss Alps there, it's just fantastic. And then, and then the next day, our friends Cammie and Donnie went paragliding, and that was so much fun. Uh, Donnie's pilot, paragliding pilot, whipped him around a few times, and you could hear him screaming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hear screaming. <laughs> so it, I'm, I'm so proud of her and him for really confronting their fears and doing it anyway and having a blast. That's a great memory for them. And then the next day, oh my gosh, we had to indulge in chocolate fondue. Oh gosh, just inject me straight in with sugar. Talk about a sugar high. It was just fantastic. And then our last night um, together, we had a wonderful dinner there in Interlaken. <laughs> yes. Tiny genie be on foreign it. land. Okay. Highlight of the trip. So I'm on the text. <laughs> no highlight? Uh, honestly, like okay, it really was. Highlight? Are we rolling? Okay. Cammie, okay. 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 so tell me was what was one so of your highlights so and your rolling. Sucking a green yeah, straw. <laughs> 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 That's what she said, yeah. <laughs> Finding my friends yes, on foreign yes. land. Really, but truly you know was. What? The restaurants, it was a really, again, really neat experience to, to the fondue, travel the, the, from all fondue, parts the of the world and, and then come together and, and break then, bread in Italy on that I first agree. night. All the food it really was. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Finding finding kindred spirits, you know, and just kind of knowing it at a soul level the, yeah. all the yeah. really good. that we parted ways um, four people went to Paris two people went to Zurich and Zane and I went to Germany and so here we are just saying goodbye to each other and having a last wonderful celebratory evening and talking about our highlights. And for many of us, it was the chef cooking our dinner that night. It was mind-blowingly good. And here we are on a train to Germany and then arriving in Germany, which you all know I love so much. And this is right off the Donau, the Danube, on the, the Kleine Blau which is a little feeder uh, stream or river that goes into the Danube. And my friends, our friends, live right there on it. And this is off their porch. Where in the world is Jeannie B? I'm sure you can guess. Look at this. Germany. Ulm, Germany. One of my favorite places in the entire world. This is the Blau, the Kleine Blau. And we are so blessed to have friends that live right here. So, the weather is gorgeous. It's a little overexposed, but look, there you go. Isn't that gorgeous? 
Now we're gonna go eat and drink and celebrate friendship. And of course we eat well every night, every morning, every lunch. I got my schnitzel fix. Oh, I was a happy girl. Schnitzel heaven. And the Stadtmitte, the center of Ulm, is just beautiful. We stayed at, uh, first time we stayed at a place called the Golden Esrad, the Golden Wheel. And it's right there on the main street. And um, so it's like right across the street from where our friends live toward the Danube and right next to the Ulm uh, Stadtmitte. And it was a full moon, which was so cool. And I got my uh, share of delicious beer, Hefeweizen. I am a Hefeweizen girl. Give me a Weiss beer, Hefeweizen, and I'm happy. And who has better beer than Germany? You know, European beers. So, yep. That house right there on the Little Blau is the Kunsthaus Frei, and those are very good friends of ours, uh, Michael and Petra and their kids, grown kids. And then the next day, we actually, there is a, the Einstein Marathon, and so we were down, that's the Danube, and we were just walking up and down the Danube and watching the runners. It was wonderful, and just the day was so beautiful. Oh! You know, and summer is ending, and flowers are starting to die off, but there are still so many beautiful, beautiful blooms. And here we are just crossing that little bridge, going back home over to our friend Wolfie and Rosie's. And waving to Petra over there on the right in the dark house there. Oh, we had, let's see, goulash, schnitzel, German spaghetti. Oh, it just, the food, the food oh, it was just amazing. And I don't think they do pest spraying <laughs> in Germany because in the evenings, those spiders come out and I was not a happy camper out on the deck. It's like, uh-uh, can't do the spiders. Can't, I don't care where I am. I'm not sitting where spiders are hanging nearby. So I busted out of there. And here's our flight home, those lovely fanny packs. And as you can see, that it's got the, the topper for the mattress topper to lay down on. And... We got home to our wonderful animals who missed us terribly. Oh, Margo, our dog, couldn't stop crying and singing and whimpering. Three weeks is a long time. It's a long time here. Thank you all for listening and for all your wonderful energy. And I hope this was a long blah, blah, blah anything and you can just put it on and tune out and listen to my voice drone on and on and on and um, you know fall asleep so I hope you enjoyed it or got to see some of what we saw so I appreciate you all and I'm gonna sign off for now I will see you in the next video I bid you so much peace and